Good morning. The psalm writer says it so well. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. When we gather together here in this space, we receive the good news of God's love for us in Jesus as it comes to us in the word and also this morning in the sacrament. May the Lord bless us in our worship. God's word this morning reminds us that because we have a Savior who came to serve us and to rescue us, we now have a special purpose as his people. Well, Father, the order is printed out. Let's begin with the opening hymn, 386, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise.
Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and has given his one and only Son, Jesus, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Son as the word of life for our eyes to see and our ears to hear, help us believe what the scriptures proclaim about him and do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. We sing the Psalm of the Day 112. You'll find it in the front of the hymn.
In the Old Testament, the Lord selected a nation, the nation of Israel, to be his very own people. He showed them his grace and mercy by rescuing them from Egypt and then giving them their special purpose to be his people who would let God's glory shine through the world. In the third month after the Israelites had left the land of Egypt, on that same day of the month, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim and came to the wilderness of Sinai, they camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain. This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob and to tell the people of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you will carefully listen to my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be my special treasure out of all the nations, although the entire earth is mine. You will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. These are the words that you are to speak to the Israelites. Moses went and summoned the elders of the people, and he set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together, Everything that the Lord has said, we will do. This is the word of the Lord. We sing the verse of it. Savior in his words, let's stand for the gospel lesson. We read from Matthew 5, a part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Jesus tells us, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its flavor, how will it become salty again? Then it is no good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on by people. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill cannot be hidden. People do not light a lamp and put it under a basket. No, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in people's presence, so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy them, but to fulfill them. Amen, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not even the smallest letter, or even part of a letter, will in any way pass away from the law until everything is fulfilled. So whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Indeed, I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and experts in the law, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We go to the children's message. Would our children like to come up? Here we have a couple. Good morning. You know what this is? It's a flashlight, right? Not very bright, but it's a flashlight. You know, in Britain, where England is, you know what they call this? They call it a torch. You know, back in the old days, in Jesus' day, they didn't have flashlights like this, but they would light torches. And then they would put them on stands, like that candle stand, in their house, because they didn't have electricity, right? They couldn't just flip the light switch on. So they had these torches, 
and that torch would give light and all the family they could eat and get ready for bed and mend their clothes and do all of those things. So I want you to pr pretend, use your imagination, <laughs> that this is a burning torch. I couldn't get a hold of one of those, so we we'll use, we'll use this torch as a torch. Now, when the family did that, they would leave the light out. They wouldn't take a basket and put over the top of it. Because what would happen if they did that? The basket would burn, right? But the light would go out. There would be no light. So when Jesus taught that lesson, he said, don't put a basket over your torch so that you don't let your light, sh you don't hide your light. Do you know that song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm Going to Let It Shine? Well, that's really what our lessons are about today. That God has made us special people. We're the people of God, we're his children, and we're like lights. And we shine out, and we give light to ourselves and to one another in God's word, but we also give light that shines out into the world, and the world can see that. So lights on torches or flashlights don't just light the way for us, they also show the way, don't they, for other people to come. And so Jesus, as the light of the world, is our way so that we can see our way our good works, the good things we do, shine out and people can see that we're Christians. And that also draws them then to Jesus, draws them to us and then we can tell them about Jesus. So we don't want to take our lights, our lives, and we don't want to hide them under a bushel, do we? But we want to let our lights shine out into the world. Let's pray so we can do that. Dear Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. We thank you for putting light of salvation and faith into our hearts so that we can shine out into the world in our good deeds. And may those deeds also draw others to us so that we might tell them about you. Don't let us hide our light under a bushel by not doing what you want us to do or being hesitant to tell others about Jesus. But let us always shine brightly that radiance of your glory for salvation for ourselves and others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up. And we'll join in our next hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to follow along with the readings, the reading from 1 Peter chapter 2, which is the basis for our sermon today. We begin at verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people who are God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. At one time you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. At one time you were not shown mercy, but now you have been shown mercy. Dear friends, I urge you, as aliens and temporary residents in the world, to abstain from the desires of the sinful flesh, which war against your soul. Live an honorable life among the Gentiles, so that even though they slander you as evildoers, when they observe your noble deeds, they may glorify God on the day he visits us. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your fellow redeemed. Have you ever heard a parent refer to their son or daughter as special? Now, I don't mean those children who have special needs or participate in special Olympics. Those children are special, truly, in every sense of the word. I'm talking about those children who are a bit quirky. They have some behaviors and, and habits that we might think are a little bit unusual. And we might mention that to the parents, that their children seem a little odd. And mom or dad, tongue in cheek, will say, oh, they're not odd, they're just special. Well, in a way, that's the way it is in our relationship with the world. The world looks at us as being quirky and odd and out of step. They, they think that we're special, but not in a good way. And when I'm talking about the world, and when Peter is talking about the world, he's talking about the world that is connected to the devil and our own sinful flesh, as in the devil, the world, and our flesh. Peter refers to them as Gentiles. We would call them unbelievers. To unbelievers, our behavior, when we do good things in God's name, is not only odd and out of touch, but at times it can be downright evil. And they think that we are evildoers when we are doing the noble deeds our God wants us to do. Peter reminds us this morning how important it is for us to know who we are, not who the world perceives us as. And so based on Peter's words, we see that we aren't evildoers. We're only special. We're special because now we are the people of God. And the Gentiles, the world, when they look at us, they are going to slander us as evildoers. Reflecting back on Pastor Learman's sermon last Sunday from Corinthians, we perceive that the apostle to the Gentiles and the apostle to the Jews scattered across Asia Minor we're on the same page when it comes to identifying the people of God. We can say, in fact, though, that 
they were on opposite sides of the same page. We could say that Paul, writing to the Corinthians, is talking about what we were before we became the people of God. Not many of you were wise, not many of you were powerful, not many of you were born of high status. Peter describes us of who we are after we become the people of God. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people who are God's very possession. And we could say, instead of very possession, we could say we're God's own possession, or we would say we are God's personal possession. God did not call us because we were already special. Who would call people who are your enemy, whose, whose mind is constantly finding ways to go against you and against your will? People who aren't, aren't really a people, but are a group of, of lost sinners running around who have no mercy. Who would call them to be a people? Well, God did. Peter says, at one time, you didn't have mercy, and there he's simply meaning Jesus hadn't come yet. But now you have been shown mercy because Jesus has come. God has sent his son into the world to be your savior, and in him, in Christ, I have called you to be my people. You weren't special, but now you are special. I have made you special in Christ. God made us special in his holy and eternal son. We are special in his righteousness, special redeemed by his cross, special because the Holy Spirit has called us by the gospel to be the people of God. There is so much to appreciate in our distinctiveness in Christ. Peter describes us, first of all, as a royal priesthood. And there we would be okay if we would use those two words as two nouns. We could translate that. We are royalty and we are priests. We rule with Christ, both now and in eternity in heaven. We are now priests who have direct access to God. No human priesthood anymore, no animal sacrifices, no special people through whom we have to go to God. We are those special people. We are God's people who have direct access to our Father to confess our sins, to take our daily needs to him. Luther said, each and all are equally spiritual priests before God. Faith alone is the true priestly office. We are special also because we are a holy nation. The holy Christian church, the communion of saints, which in the creed is the same thing, so it's okay to say those two things quickly together, is the new Israel. We are the people of God. We are holy in Christ. We are his special nation. The Jews were an earthly nation for a while in history, but now there is no earthly special nation. God's special people, his holy nation, is the church, is all believers in Christ. That is the fulfillment of the words 
we heard God speak to Moses on Mount Sinai in our first lesson. You will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. Peter says God has called us out of darkness. We now live in the light of Christ, and that light shines brightly in our hearts, in our faith. Paul wrote to the Corinthians about this. For the God who said, light will shine out of darkness, is the same one who made light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the person of Jesus Christ. We are God's special people, his special children, because we have the light of the knowledge that Jesus is the glory of God and our Savior from sin. And that light is shining brightly in our hearts because God created it there. Just like at creation, when he created light to shine into the darkness. We are God's special people. We are his own, his very personal possession. And so in Lutheran terms, what does this mean? Well, it means when the world looks at us, they think we're odd and quirky and out of touch and out of step. And that's because, Peter says, we are aliens and temporary residents in this world. Now, those two things might seem like the same thing, but did you notice the subtle difference? We are aliens, which means we don't belong here. This, this isn't our home. We're away from where we belong. And we're only temporary residents in this world. We're only just passing through on our way to heaven, on our way to be with our Father in heaven. And while we're here, as we carry out noble deeds, as we carry out good works of love and forgiveness and benefit for others, as we do those good things for them and the world according to God's will, the world looks at us like there's something wrong with us. They look at us like we're actually evildoers. Haven't you ever experienced that? We defend the unborn. We speak out against sexual immorality of, of all kinds. We warn against false churches and false teachings and false teachers. And what do we get for those good things that we say and show to the world? We get their anger and we get their resentment and we get their very slander when they call the good things we do evil. We always need to remember, though, that the world isn't really all that far away from any one of us. Think of how closely tied that world slander of good is in us. Think of the times that maybe parents and children of all ages, or husbands and wives, or or bosses and employers, or whatever relationship there might be, and you do something that is in agreement with God's will, is in keeping with the commandments, is a good deed that is going to help that person that you're doing it with or interacting with. Pastors, elders in the church, Maybe we've wandered away and the pastor or the elder comes to visit us. 
Or maybe you see a fellow Christian who is beginning to rationalize their sin to themselves or to others. So in every one of those cases, we go and we try to help and do good. And what's the response? We're considered to be interfering. Or maybe even accused, or one will say, you don't really love me. Or you don't love me anymore. Or, Pastor, if you don't stop bothering me, I'm going to call my lawyer and get a restraining order. Or, you self-righteous busybody, why don't you just watch out for yourself instead of coming and telling me what's wrong with me? We could fall into all of those attitudes of the world and call others who are doing good for us, slandering them and calling them evildoers. It's obvious, isn't it, that for us Christians, for me, Peter said, is a constant struggle to abstain from the desires of the sinful flesh that war against your soul. And Peter, for war there, uses the present tense of the verb, meaning it's constant. You and I know, don't we, that our sinful desires are constantly warring against our souls. And we Christians, each of us individually, are living in a world now that is the fulfillment of what Isaiah wrote about in chapter 5 of his book. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, and who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness. But Peter urged those Jews in the diaspora, they were scattered around Asia by the Romans after the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD, Peter wrote to them and urged them to keep doing noble deeds nonetheless. Keep loving them. Keep forgiving them. Keep testifying to, to Jesus as the Savior. Keep obeying God's will. Keep doing right even though you are slandered. Why? Because you might just wear them down. And maybe you've experienced that as well. Where we just keep loving somebody, we just keep forgiving them, we just keep doing good to them, and we sort of wear down their slander. And they begin to wonder, how can you be like this? How can you continue to do this? And they come around to asking those questions, and then we have the opportunity, don't we then, to preach Jesus Christ to them, to be personal evangelists and shine that light of the glory of God in Christ also into their hearts. More than once, we will see where people who at one time were slanderers of Christ and his will stop doing that. And then, as Peter says, they are ready on the day he visits us. Then they won't be rejected by Christ on Judgment Day, but then they will be welcomed into his kingdom right along with the rest of us. No fellow aliens and temporary residents in this world, we are not evildoers. And God doesn't speak tongue-in-cheek when he says, no, they're just special. He says that and means it because we are special, because he has made us the people of God in Christ. And now we are really and truly only special. Amen.
And now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand and join me in confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. This time we'll gather our offerings of love to our Savior. Please stand. Lord, you love the cheerful giver who with open heart and hand blesses freely as a river that refreshes all the land. Grant us then the grace of giving with a spirit large and true that our life and all our living we may consecrate to you. Amen. We offer to the Lord the response of prayer on pages six and seven in our service folder. Let us pray. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. 
Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood, which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need and to help them with deeds of kindness. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petition. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray together his prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In the past, he spoke to us through the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, who is the radiance of his glory. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. saying, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
stand to sing Thank the Lord on page 10. that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the gift of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for the singing of the closing hymn. May Christ go with each of us as we show that we are God's special people and the way we carry our lives in the week ahead. Special welcome to guests. Please sign our friendship register members too. Before you leave, you'll find it in the blue binder at the end of your pew. 
We have Bible class today. We're finishing out our study on God's wisdom for life called the Book of Proverbs. A number of topics like, like humility and forgiveness and so on. Please come if you can. Also, I note that our Thursday Bible class will be starting a new study, the Book of Esther. It's a unique book in God's Word, but our God preserved his people from danger and disaster a long time ago. If you want to join, you may come in person on Thursday morning, or if you want to come in the evening, then you would join virtually. So see me if you're interested in starting that study. In two weeks, we have our annual voters meeting on that Sunday after the second service. There's more information in the bulletin about recommendations coming from the Self-Assessment and Adjustment Committee through our church council. Please read that through. This will be a topic of discussion at our annual meeting in two weeks. God's blessings on your day and your week ahead.